Welcome to the course Transformational Leadership with Dr. Richard Nongard. Peter Drucker famously said, Management is doing things right. Leadership is doing the right things. In this course, you are going to master the art of leadership and transform the people and communities where you connect. Leadership is the heart of accomplishment, and in your profession, you can move from doing things right to doing the right things by growing in your ability to transform others. This course will teach you how to utilize transformational leadership to make the world a better place and to make you an accomplished leader. And now, Dr. Richard Nongard. Dr. Richard Nongard. Well, welcome to lesson number one, and I've titled lesson number one, Everything I Learned About Leadership, I Learned in Therapy. No, I didn't learn it as a client in therapy, but I am a licensed psychotherapist. And this is important because I'm in private practice. I'm the only one in my office. I usually work with only one client at a time. Almost every leadership book that I've read focuses on historical models of leadership from Moses in the Old Testament to recent figures like Nelson Mandela and the nations they have led. Almost every business leadership book that I read focuses on the CEO, whether that's Steve Jobs or Jack Welch or any other rock star CEO. It's because of this that I think leadership is often viewed in a limited context. It's often viewed in the limited context of those who are bigger than us. Or from the perspective that the hallmark of true leadership is rising to some identifiable level of status or role. Most of us are never going to lead a multinational corporation or be the president of a powerful country. But that's not what leadership is about for the vast majority of people. As a therapist, I was leading one person at a time to important change. As a therapist, I had to confront my own neurotic tendencies to be an effective guide for others. And this is the heart of transformational leadership, to transform others while transforming oneself. Why is transformation necessary? The simple answer is because nothing stays the same. Transformational leadership is important not because something needs to change, but because things are always changing. Simply put, transformation and transformational leadership is the natural state of life, both in business and on an individual level. One of my most recent clients in therapy was a diabetic who had just experienced an amputation. Because he continued to smoke after the amputation, oxygen was not reaching the extremities and he was not healing. The reason that he called my office was to have me help him stop smoking. As a therapist, my work in leadership is often one-on-one. -on -one. In my session with this client, I didn't draw from my toolbox of psychological therapies, but rather from my toolbox in transformational leadership, helping him to make a lasting change not because change was desired, but because life brings inevitable change. It's through this lens that I was able to create change where previously it had been resisted. And transformational leadership helped me walk with him into a new chapter of life. A chapter of life that I entered when I quit smoking more than a decade ago. This type of leadership is far more common than the leadership most textbooks and training programs focus on. You're far more likely to lead a small group of families through difficult times as a pastor or as a family therapist than to be the pastor of a mega church or the next Virginia Satir. You're far more likely to use your creative capacity in business as a small entrepreneur supervising two to three associates than being the CEO of a big box retailer. In management, you're far more likely to be responsible for the performance of individual employees than you are the 305,000 worldwide employees of General Electric. You are far more likely to both need and develop leadership skills on a more intimate level than the paradigms written about in most leadership training manuals. A lot of leadership books have you think about what it will be like when you are a leader. But take a moment right now as you listen to this material and think about how you can fulfill the role of a leader in the community where you are right now. In order to become an effective transformational leader, we need to recognize that 
were actually already a transformational leader. The question is, how can we fully realize our potential and become an even more potent force within our families, within our communities, within our businesses, organizations, within our nation, and even within the world? Transformational leadership at its core is about attending. It's about being with people. It's not about doing something to people, but doing something with them. As a therapist, I learned leadership is collaborative. As a therapist, I learned the value of just sitting with somebody, of just being with them. It has been said that good therapy is belly button to belly button communication, and this metaphor describes therapy as an exchange where both client and therapist are nourished and grow. And effective leadership ultimately strengthens both the leader and the follower. Although I hold a doctorate in transformational leadership from Baki Graduate University, much of what I've learned about leadership has come from my practice in counseling, one-on-one. The learnings in leadership were, of course, codified in my academic studies and in my dissertation. But counseling is a process of change, and the role of the therapist is to guide a person through transformation. In some cases, this transformation is based on an elective decision, but in many cases, the change is inevitable, and counseling is sought to make an inevitable transition tolerable to a client. This is an axiom that's also true in organizational leadership, educational leadership, healthcare leadership, community-based leadership in both large and small organizations. When I look back on my many years as a therapist and ask myself, what did I learn about leadership in therapy? I recognize that it taught me many things about transformational leadership. Therapies taught me that transformation is the normal state of life, that absolutely nothing stays the same. Therapies taught me that the issue is not how to make change as much as it is how to make changes transformational. Therapy has taught me that lasting transformation occurs collaboratively. Therapy has taught me that leadership is not just about the CEO or international politician, but a concept all of us must understand to improve our connection to others, even on a one-on-one level. Therapy taught me about myself. It forced me to make my own changes in order to be an effective therapeutic leader with my clients. Therapy also taught me how to help make tomorrow better. With my clients in therapy, I have collaborated with them to help them acquire a new vision that inspires them to make change. With my clients in therapy, I've collaborated with them to help them experience authenticity in every aspect of personal development. With my clients in therapy, I've collaborated with them to help them create a growth mindset that's based on progress rather than perfection. With my clients in therapy, I've collaborated with them to help them acquire creativity, which is the key to original solutions and positive growth. And of course, one of my most profound experiences as a therapist is that therapy transformed me. My clients caused me to challenge myself, my own thinking, and my actions. It helped me define my own search for significance and learn new skills at every level. To effectively lead people through transformation, I needed transformation, and I am not the same person through this process that I was at the outset. My theoretical orientation has changed. My relationship to spiritual thought has changed, and I've become not only more effective but happier and more accepting, and more effective as a counselor. When I went into the therapy field, it was before managed care became the norm in healthcare delivery. Over the last 25 years, the significant changes in the economics of counseling have brought changes to the way therapy is structured and how services are provided. Because change is inevitable, transformation is necessary. And transformational leadership has been the key that's helped me my clients, and my own business and community experience success. 
Now, in addition to being a therapist, I've also been a teacher, and I've also served as president of an international professional association. Through the many inevitable changes in both the delivery of health care services, legislative changes, and a variety of different organizational need. All of this has come on a foundation of personal transformation, with me recognizing my own need for internal transformation and change to be an effective leader for others. Whenever I talk about making personal change, people think I'm talking about the things that they need to stop doing. Well, perhaps there are some things when you reflect that are holding you back from your greatest level of potential that might need to be stopped. But chances are, for you, to be an effective leader, the real question is, how do I start using those internal strengths and resources which are already present? In this course, I'm going to explore the ideas of transformational leadership. But more importantly, this course is designed to be a how-to manual, and it will teach you how to transform yourself while transforming others. Even if the context of your calling is as an executive, or a small entrepreneur, or a local pastor or therapist, or even as a person who simply wants the world to be a better place. It is not required that you either are or aspire to being a worldwide political leader, a CEO, or a famous philanthropist. For those who implement the ideas contained in this course, the outcomes will be profound. I know that you're going to experience success. You'll not only gain followers as you lead, but you'll even find your own pathway to effectiveness. You'll intuitively solve problems and find good, even in situations where others lack hope. The process that this course is going to guide you through will make you more accepting, adaptable, and giving, while at the same time, enhancing your personal power and enlarging the impact of your influence on others. Do you want to experience success at every level of your life? Do you want to be a more effective pastor, executive, counselor, or entrepreneur? Transformational leadership is paradoxical. You will learn how to help others while helping yourself. And you will learn that Through processes unique to those who maximize their leadership potential, you can make the world a better place. Before we go any further, let me share with you two examples of leadership. The reason why I'm sharing these examples is simple. Sometimes it's easier to define leadership, a concept like leadership, Uh, through examples. Although I am going to take a look at some of both the academic and the popular definitions of various forms of leadership in this course. But both events actually happened this week when I was recording this course at the 2014 Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. The CEO of T-Mobile, John Ledger, made a speech. And in the speech, instead of wearing a tie and instead of using family-friendly language, he came out wearing a t-shirt, holding a can of Red Bull, wearing a pair of sneakers, and actually gave a speech that was filled with at least mild profanity. He has been called or nicknamed by some the Rebel CEO. In the United States, our telecommunications companies actually are light years behind the telecommunication companies in both Asia, Europe, as well as other parts of the world. And his goal is to transform the American telecommunications industry. The jury is certainly out as to whether or not his leadership style, or more accurately, his personal style reflected in his leadership, is going to be an effective vehicle for leading T-Mobile into the future. But nonetheless, some of the things that he has done over the past year have been transformational. During his short tenure so far as CEO of T-Mobile, he's challenged the price structure of the American telecommunication industry. He's looked at relationships and altered relationships in supplier partnerships, in distribution networks, and he's challenged the status quo of all telecommunication companies, forcing other companies to respond to him. 
This is pretty remarkable considering the other players in telecommunications are actually bigger than T-Mobile. But T-Mobile, at least at the current time, seems to be leading the future in American telecommunications. Whether his tenure at T-Mobile is short or whether it's long, whether it's viewed as effective or not, uh, John Ledger is such a unique leader in the corporate world that his model of leadership will be something that's discussed for some time. I imagine somebody will even write a book about him and his leadership style. And of course, newspaper articles and magazine articles will look back at his years at T-Mobile and evaluate whether or not it was the pivotal, pivotal change necessary to lead that company into the future. Some will undoubtedly love John Ledger, thinking he's an incredible transformational leader, and because he's probably a polarizing figure, there are others who will think that his performance has been less than stellar, but nonetheless, people will be talking about him and T-Mobile for some time to come. Now, at the same time, he was speaking at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas in 2014. I was actually having dinner with a friend of mine at a local Thai restaurant. There were a few of us there, old friends, a physician friend of mine, a friend of mine who works at the front desk of one of the larger hotels in Las Vegas, and another friend of mine who actually manages one of the local healthcare, uh, uh, health and gym studios. As I was talking to my friend who works at the front desk at one of the larger hotels, I was telling her about my project and putting this course together on leadership. And as we were talking about the impact one person can have on another person, she told me a story, a story she didn't identify as being related to leadership, but one that I thought was a perfect example of effective leadership. Over the past Christmas holiday, with 84 team members on her, uh, on, on her team at her hotel uh, that she's a part of, uh, she knew that somebody would be alone for the holidays, that somebody on her team would not get a card, that somebody on that team out of 84 people would feel perhaps lonely or unloved. So what she did was pretty remarkable. She actually took her day off from work, and she handmade 84 Christmas cards for each of those employees. She came in early for work one day, early before her shift began, and she put in all those employee mailboxes the 84 cards that she had handmade, wishing each person on her team a Merry Christmas. She is not the team leader. She is not the department manager. She is not the president of the company. She is a frontline employee, like the other 84 employees on her team. But what she did through compassion and caring was as powerful as any of the decisions that a CEO can make at a corporate level. John Ledger is a CEO. My friend is a hotel front desk clerk. Both of them have the capacity to impact people's lives in a positive and meaningful way. Transformational leadership is for all of us and it's for you as well. As you participate in this course and listen to the various lectures, I'd like for you to be asking yourself at the conclusion of each lesson, what's one thing that I can take from today's lesson and apply it to my own experience in my own life so that I can be a more effective leader where I am called to serve? As you listen to this course, perhaps you are a CEO and you're thinking to yourself, what decision can I implement that would transform our company? Or perhaps you're like me and you're a therapist. And when the next client walks through your door, the question for you will be, how can I lead this person to a lasting change which can assist this person in resolving the difficulties that to this point they have been unable to address? Perhaps you're a small business person and your business to this point has been successful, but you'd like to take it to the next level, to maybe even cross that million-dollar mark in annual sales. 
or create a program within your small company to have an impact in a positive way on the community. Social entrepreneurship. Different people have taken this course for a variety of different reasons. But my hope is that in each of the various sections of this course, you'll be able to take something with you that can help you be an effective transformational leader. How do you define transformational leadership? I'm going to start with a pop culture definition of transformational leadership. This one comes from Wikipedia. Now, of course, Wikipedia is not a source for academic writing, but as a reflection of popular definitions, it can be a starting point for us in understanding the various components of leadership. And some editor has actually given this one some thought because it's a fairly accurate definition of transformational leadership. Transformational leadership enhances the motivation, morale, and performance of followers through a variety of mechanisms. There's a basic definition. These include connecting the follower's sense of identity and self to the project and the collective identity of the organization. It's being a role model for followers that inspires them and makes them interested, challenging followers to take greater ownership for their work and understanding the strengths and weaknesses of followers so that the leader can align followers with tasks to enhance their performance. There's a a textbook definition, I suppose, of transformational leadership. In our next lesson, I'm actually going to challenge the notion of leadership being a lateral or a hierarchical hierarchical, uh, metaphor for leadership. But James Burns wrote that leaders and followers make each other to advance to a higher level of moral motivation. Elaine Sorensen Marshall wrote, It is a process of developing the leadership capacity of an entire team. Transformational leaders inspire others to achieve what might be considered extraordinary results. Leaders and followers engage with each other, raise each other, and inspire each other. Randy Dobbs who was a well-known CEO who was with General Electric during Jack Welch's tenure. In the context of organizational leadership, gives us five attributes that define transformational leadership. These are really all based on what we can see in the results. The first point Randy Dobbs makes is that transformational leaders build a culture. The second point he makes is that transformational leaders improve esprit de corps. The third point about transformational leadership that he makes is that transformational leaders communicate issues and actions in an effective way, improving their communication capacity. From a business perspective, or any Dobbs perspective on leadership, the fourth hallmark of transformational leadership is to produce a change in the financial results. If you're a therapist like I am, we're probably not changing financial results, but we're changing behavioral results, and a pastor might be changing spiritual results. Any metric can be utilized here. Ultimately, one of the reasons why I love Randy Dobbs' definition of transformational leadership is point five that he gives us, and that is that transformational leadership leaves behind a cadre of future transformational leaders. When I was 16 or 17 years old, it really was kind of a tough time in life. It seemed like everybody either moved or died my junior year of high school, sophomore year of high school. It was it was actually pretty tough. There was one guy, though, who was really helpful to me. He happened to be the volunteer at Campus Life Youth for Christ. Actually, I think he was a paid staff member. And he was in charge of helping the local teens through the churches, uh, engage in various social activities, and, of course, ministry. I went to the jello snarfing contests that he organized. I went to the burger bashes. I went to the concerts that were offered to us. And I, I went to the religious services that were a part of that as well. During my particular time of need, this minister was there to help me on a personal level, along with other kids there in the community. Because he was so helpful to me, uh, long after I graduated from college, I continued occasionally to give him a call on the telephone, say hello, 
I grew up in Chicago, and I had since moved off to the south where it's much warmer and no snow, and he had moved to northern Michigan where there was more snow and a little bit colder temperature. And so even though we were now living in different parts of the country and I was now an adult, I maintained that friendship. I would send him a Christmas card and I would call him up on the phone and speak to him. One day I called him up and he said he had big news. I said, what's that? He said, well, I'm, I'm leaving Campus Life Youth for Christ. I said, really? Why? I was surprised. He said, well, he said, uh, you know, I have four kids and he and his wife had four kids and now they're getting older and they're going to be going to college and I need to do something that, um, that, uh, that, that pays the bills to a greater extent than my previous career. He said, so I'm excited. I've taken a, a new job and I'm going to be selling hydraulic hose. I immediately became a little concerned. Was he no longer interested in things of faith or ministering to people or or helping people, he chuckled. He said, no. He said, I'm still going to be ministering to people, but in a volunteer capacity rather than in a paid capacity because I'm going to be, like Paul, I'm going to be a tent maker and earn my living selling hydraulic hoses. Now, my friend had stayed in youth ministry for many years, which is actually uncommon in youth ministry. It's a field with high stress, high burnout, and, and low wages. And so I asked him, I said, well, you know, you did stay in youth ministry longer than most. I said, you know, what do all the other kids who you've worked with over the years say about this change that you've made? He said, well, I don't know. I said, well, what do they think about it? You know, going from youth ministry to hydraulic host sales. And he said, well, you know, I'm, I'm not really sure. And so I said to him, well, when you talk on the phone to them, what do they say? And he said, well, I, I don't really talk to them on the phone too much. I said, well, you've been doing youth ministry for almost 20 years. Certainly you hear from people. He said, well, yeah, you know, occasionally after they graduate from high school, you know, if they join the military, they come back and show me the awesome the car they bought, uh, uh, you know, say hello when they're on leave. He said, if they go off to college, I usually hear from them in college, particularly if they have some difficulties or things like that, get an invitation to their weddings uh, after they graduate. He said, but... You know, being a youth minister, for the most part, as people grow up and move on, I stop hearing from people. I said to him, wow, you've stayed in youth ministry for almost 20 years, but you rarely ever hear from anybody. What motivated you to stay in it? He paused for a moment and he said, well, you kept calling. For my friend, leadership was not about helping most of the people most of the time. For my friend, leadership was about helping some of the people some of the time and hoping that those people would then go on to help transform other people. He derived his satisfaction not from becoming the guru of youth ministers and becoming the king of a global empire of related youth ministries, but by hopefully having an impact on some of the kids we worked with over the years who would then go on to positively impact other people. In my mind, this really is the heart of transformational leadership. What Randy Dobbs talk, talks about in his book on transformational leadership, leaving behind a cadre of future transformational leaders so that the change is not just about one person, but about the system, the community, and the organization. I'm going to give you one last definition of transformational leadership, a definition that I wrote. Transformational leadership is a form of synergistic leadership where motivation to action comes from the leader's own growth and enthusiasm for new possibilities. Transformational leadership is a dynamic leadership that recognizes change as a constant and, as a result, leadership is an ongoing function of organizational and individual wellness. Transformational leadership utilizes processes that have known efficacy to create lasting change in individuals, in communities, in organizations, and even in the world. In our next lesson, I'm going to answer the question, is transformational leadership really more effective than other forms of leadership? And I'm going to touch on some of the other forms of leadership's that academics like Bernard Bass have written about and that are studied in academic circles. 
Our goal in this course, though, is to give you a foundation for making true change in your world, in your communities, and within yourself as well. Thank you for participating in Lesson 1, and it's time to move on to Lesson Number 2. Number 2. Number 2.